Hello there and welcome to Sunday Online. Uh, it's great that you can join us here at St. James today. Uh, we hope that you've had a good week, that you're doing well, uh, perhaps enjoying the cold weather outside. Uh, and this week is a special week because it is the week of prayer for Christian unity. And so this Sunday, which is the 22nd, uh, tomorrow for me, as I'm recording on, a, on, on Saturday, uh, it, tomorrow we are having our ecumenical service. So that's a service together with the other Dutch-speaking churches in Voorschoten, uh, with the, uh, the Dutch Reformed Church and with the Catholic Church. And that will be in the Catholic Church building, which is the Laurentiuskerk, which is the big church next to the Bondsgebouw, where we have uh, where we met over Christmas. And so in that big church at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning uh, will be our ecumenical service. So no no service in the BSN tomorrow, but a service at 11 o'clock in the Laurentiuskerk. And this service will be uh, partly in Dutch and partly in English, and there will be translations in the booklets. Uh, it is my turn to preach uh, this time round, so uh, I'll be preaching. And uh, we've got great music from the choir, uh, and uh, there will be groups for kids and all of that. So if you are watching this before 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, then you're very warmly invited to come along to the ecumenical service at the Laurentius Kerk in Voorschoten. So just a few notices to share before we uh, have our um, before we have our readings and our sermon for today. Uh, firstly, uh, that last week we had John Leach with us, who helped us with an exercise in which we are thinking about our church profile. And the church profile is 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 our vision for what what kind of church St James is and what kind of church we want St James to be. And uh, this is part of the process of recruiting a new chaplain to replace Ruin. And uh, what I just want to say is that this Sunday, the 22nd, is the last opportunity for you to give your feedback or your inputs into that process. So uh, what you would like St. James to be known for, uh, what your opinion is of St. James. And uh, if you're on the weekly email, you will have received an email about this with the recording of last week's service, uh, together with some questions for you to reflect about and to give your feedback to the team uh, who are looking at the recruitment of the new chaplain. So if you have any input to give, then please would you send that in by this Sunday. Secondly, we are advertising for a youth worker. We've been doing this uh, for a little while now, uh, the, but uh, we, we, haven't, we have yet to find the right candidate to replace Mercedes who, who left uh, halfway through 2022. And uh, we are advertising for a new part-time paid youth worker. So this is about 10 to 15 hours a week. Uh, and there is an advert both on the website St. James Sotonel as well as in the weekly email. So would you be praying for a good candidate to come forward? And would you also be sharing the advert around in your network uh, with people who might be interested? Uh, this might be a good job, for instance, for people who are uh, studying uh, a job on the side. Uh, this is a it's a good if these people speak both English and Dutch. That's also something that we're looking for. Uh, but have a look at the profile in the weekly email or on the website. And please be praying and please be sharing that around uh, so that we could find a new youth worker to encourage our young people. Then next to say that we are revising the electoral role. So the electoral role is the, is the membership role of the church. And uh, the electoral role, if you're on the role, then you uh, can participate as a voting member uh, at our annual general meeting. Uh, you can be on council and things like that. So if you consider yourself a member of St. James, then please would you sign up to the electoral role. This, uh, we have to announce that the role is opening. So the role will be open from the 5th of uh, February, Sunday the 5th of February. So that's in two weeks time on a Sunday. And it will uh, stay open till Wednesday the 1st of March. So. Uh, a little under a month, this role will be open. Uh, what you can do is you can um, make sure if you are on the role that your details are correct by checking with Bronwyn Lucas, who is our electoral role officer. You can chat to her in church and there will be details uh, as well in the weekly email as well as signs, uh, uh, as well as forms to sign up if you're not yet on the role. Uh, so keep your eye open for those. And we do this, uh, as I said, in preparation for our annual general meeting, which will take place on the 20, Wednesday, the 22nd of March at 8 p.m. And the meeting will be online. But again, there will be more information about this closer to the time. 
The next notice is that the book club is meeting. Uh, uh, we have a, a book club which reads a book, uh, and then every few months they come together to discuss that. It is meeting again tomorrow uh, on Monday, that is the 23rd of January on Zoom from 8 till 9 p.m. And the link is in the weekly email, in the, in the second email that you received uh, this week. And uh, even if you didn't read the book but are interested in, 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 in talking uh, and in perhaps knowing what the next book is, you're very welcome to join in as well. So, you, so this is for anyone who's interested in joining the book club to please join on Zoom at 8 o'clock on Monday evening. Then next Sunday we are back in the BSN at half past 10 and that will be a service of morning worship and we will be continuing our series on spiritual formation, which uh, which I introduced a few weeks ago. So we'll be continuing with that. After uh, the service, there will be a lunch for the youth. Uh, so uh, the the youth uh, people coordinating the youth work will be in contact with the young people. Uh, but if you haven't had any information about that and would like it, uh, please get in contact with us. Office at St. James Otanel, and then we can tell you more about the youth lunch, which is happening after church next Sunday. So those are all the notices for today. There are more in the weekly email, so please uh, read that if you haven't yet. Please sign up if you don't yet receive the weekly email. You can do, you can sign up at stjamesotnl slash contact and there'll be a form to sign up to receive one email per week with all the important news about our church community. Those are all the notices for today. We're going to go into our readings now and then afterwards uh, I'm going to preach. So as I mentioned this is the week of prayer for Christian unity so there are ecumenical services happening all around the world and I'm going to read two of the readings which have been set uh, by the World Council of Churches for this Sunday. The first one is from Isaiah 1 uh, verses 12 to 18. When you come to appear before me who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths and convocations, I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals, I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the cause of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Then the second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 40. Jesus says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and, and invite you in or needing clothes, clothes and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So shall we pray. 
Lord God, as we have heard two challenging readings this morning, we pray that you would speak to us, that we would be uh, where we need to be disturbed, uh, would you disturb us? And where we need to be comforted, would you comfort us? Would you speak to us uh, through your spirits? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the theme for this year's week of prayer for Christian unity is from Isaiah 1 verse 17. Learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. My wife and I used to live uh, in Durban in South Africa. And one of the things which makes South Africa very different from the Netherlands is the experience of, of waiting at the traffic lights. If you are in a large city, the chances are that as, as you wait at the traffic lights, uh, someone will come up to your window offering uh, something for sale. They might uh, be wanting to sell food or sell you a newspaper or sell, sell you a phone charger. Or they might come to offer to do something for you, like wash your car window for you as you wait at the traffic lights. Or many of them simply come to, to beg and to ask for food or ask for money. And the people who tend to do this uh, tend to be young, young men, young women, sometimes even children. I always found this one of the most confronting and one of the most disturbing things of living in Africa, this experience, which happened uh, most times that I drove into town. Uh, the poverty and the, the dire need which is right there in front of your nose, the, the enormous scale of it wherever you look, all these poor people. And you want to give money uh, to those begging because you want to help. Uh, but the question is, how do you help? What does helping look like? If you give money and they use it for alcohol or for drugs, then are you helping or, or are you uh, bringing hurting? Are you making the problems even worse? How does What does helping the poor look like in a situation like that? God's message uh, through the prophet Isaiah to the people of Israel is very clear. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Now, I'm sure that we all know that caring for the poor is one of the, the central calls uh, on a Christian's life. Uh, one of the clear Christian responsibilities that we have. The care for the outcast, the refugee, those who are poor, the prisoner. But I was struck by what God says here in this passage, in the verses before, because he seems to be angry before he says this, he seems to be angry with Israel for their worship. He says, your offerings to me are meaningless. Your assemblies are worthless. I hate your festivals. I hide my eyes from you. I refuse to listen to your prayer. So these are all activities which we associate uh, with worship, with church. Uh, when we gather to celebrate like we do on a Sunday morning like this, uh, we, we pray, we bring our offerings, so we sing. And, but these are the very things here that God claims to hate. He, he says, I hate these things. So I can tell you that as a church leader, this is concerning to me that I read about all the things that, that we are trying to do. And God says that he, he hates them. This makes, makes me uncomfortable. Because isn't this what our faith is all about? Gathering together to, to worship the living God. Aren't these the very things that God calls us to uh, in other places? Surely you couldn't imagine that God would hate what we do on a Sunday morning. That we, we can't even imagine that that would be the case. And yet, uh, uh, God says that very thing here through Isaiah. He says, he continues and says, Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. My fellow Christian brothers and sisters, God could not care less if we sang a thousand songs, if we prayed a million prayers, if we gave all of our money to the church. He could not care less unless we also do good and seek justice. If we do not do good and seek justice, all those other things 
do not matter to God. Unless our lives from Monday to Saturday are marked for by a concern for those who are less well off, by a concern for those people in need, unless our lives are marked by that, it really doesn't matter what we do on a Sunday. You might say in response to me, well, doesn't the Bible say that all that really matters is believing that that it's not the work that the works that matters, the works that we do, but that our faith is uh, uh, what's important. Am I now suddenly saying that we it is actually our works that save us? That is actually what is most important. Surely that's not what I'm saying. Well, let's see what Jesus says in the in the Gospel of Matthew in in, in the reading from today, Matthew 25. You uh, might be familiar with the story of the sheep and the goats, how at the end of the time, Jesus will separate people like a, a shepherd separates sheep and goats into two categories. And the sheep are the ones who Jesus commends because they do the right things, whereas the goats are those that Jesus criticizes because they did not do the right things. So then the question is, what, what are the right things that people are being judged by in, the, in this reading? Well, we see feeding the hungry, inviting the stranger in, clothing the naked, caring for the sick, visiting the prisoner. In short, it is loving those who are less well off than we are, than we are those who are in need, loving those people. How, how we treat these people, that is what separates us in the eyes of Jesus. So that, that's very striking, isn't it? It's a, it's a very clear example here of how Jesus is saying uh, the, the separation happens on basis of how you have treated the poor and those in need. So then the question is, how do we do good? How do we seek justice? We have a, a somewhat unique challenge here. Uh, if, if you live uh, in this area, in the Forschote area, as I do, because we live in a relatively wealthy part of Holland. And Holland, of course, is a relatively wealthy country and, and in a relatively wealthy part of the world. So here at the traffic lights, uh, uh, thank God, we do not see children begging for food. Uh, in fact, in a village like Forschote, it can be hard to see where there is need at all because it's not always obvious. But just because we can't always see the need, that doesn't mean that there isn't any need. Because in this community, there are refugees and there are, including those, of course, from Ukraine. There are people who depend on a food bank in order to make ends meet. There are people who are lonely and who have no social connections. There are people who are ill, people who are in debt, people who are addicted. And there are things, of course, that we can do to meet those Needs which, which are sometimes hidden to us. We can give to the food bank. We can give to charities. We can give to church. We can participate and give our time. Why don't we start perhaps by paying attention to our direct neighbors, those who live in our streets? Do we know them? Do we know the people in our street? Do we know the people in our block of flats? There's much that we can do by simply showing Christian love and charity to those who live uh, next to us or who live in, in our neighborhoods. Go and introduce yourself. Go and get to know that other person. And, and soon enough, God will show you a need that you can meet. We are blessed in many ways here in the West, but we have also created a society in which we tend to distance ourselves from the problems of our neighbors. Our society preaches personal responsibility and independence. We say that these are important things. And in Dutch, we have a saying that everyone should be able to hold up their own trousers. Je eigen broek op kunnen houden. Everyone should be able to care for themselves, take their own responsibility. Now, of course, taking responsibility is important. But by overemphasizing it, we have lost this very important sense of our corporate responsibility, our communal responsibility, our responsibility of us to our neighbor. We are all responsible for each other. The vast majority of the times that the Bible speaks about the plight of the poor, in doing so, it is pointing a finger of accusation at the rich. It doesn't say, come on, poor people, uh, pull up your own pants, go and find a job, sort yourself out. Instead, it says, shame on you rich people for not caring for the poor. 
Brothers and sisters, it is great that we live in a wealthy country. Uh, it's great that we have a welfare state with benefits and social security and charities. This is really good. And it's wonderful that the state shares some of our responsibility for caring for the poor. But we must beware of thinking that this means that there is nothing left for us to do. If we do not pour out ourselves in love for our neighbor, then all of our worship, all of this stuff that we do on a Sunday, God could not care less unless we are also pouring ourselves out in love for our poor neighbor. But the re reverse is also true, that whenever we do do something, uh, as, as Jesus says, for the least of his brothers and sisters, whenever we do do anything for them, we are doing it not just for them, but we're doing it for God. This is the worship that God requires, to learn to do good, to seek justice, to rescue the oppressed, to defend the orphan, to plead for the widow. I'd like to close with a prayer. God, creator and redeemer of all things, teach us to look inward to be grounded in your loving spirit, so that we may go outward in wisdom and courage to always choose the path of love and justice. Help us to do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us and we'd love to see you again next time. Bye-bye.